10 Secrets You Missed in Minions The Rise of Gru Part 2 Minions The Rise of Gru, the sequel of one of the most loved animated movies of this decade. The Minions franchise is so liked mainly because of the incredibly funny, goofy, and overly cute personality of the Minions. Their behavior, their language, and their actions are all an amazing and funny spectacle to watch. Everything about the Minions is fun and entertaining. Even a normal situation can turn into the most outlandish and funny moments because of the fun personality that the Minions have. Minions The Rise of Gru is definitely as fun and charming as the first Minions movie. Even though it doesn't outshine and surpass the great storyline and moments of the first movie, it still has a beautiful and incredibly funny plot that makes you have a great time while watching the film. A movie full of action-packed scenes with even more funny moments and even more greater characters. The fun plot of this movie is very rich and full of adventures and great moments that not only make you laugh, but also make you watch it with adrenaline. The fun in this movie is out of this world with amazing funny action scenes like the ending where everything is so fun and outlandish that it makes you laugh like no other, and a great set of new characters like Gru and the Vicious Six who make the movie more interesting and with more potential to watch. Minions The Rise of Gru tells us the story of the Minions right after the ending of the first movie, where they meet none other than young Gru, and they go to live with him to help him become the best supervillain ever. In Minions 2, Gru will have the opportunity to be interviewed by the best supervillain group called the Vicious Six. After they kicked out their leader, Wild Knuckles, they are looking for new leaders, but the interview doesn't go according to plan, and things get chaotic after Gru steals the Zodiac Stone from the Vicious Six. Here, they start pursuing Gru and the Minions to get the stone back, and this is where the amazing plot of the movie begins. The Minions will help young Gru become the best supervillain ever, and defeat the Vicious Six as best as they can. Obviously, causing the greatest funny scenes ever in the process, because the Minions will always be Minions. But like I showed you in part 1, there are so many sequels that you guys have missed in the Minions The Rise of Gru movie. Sequels that you didn't see or pick up on because the movie is full of energy, adventures, and fun that it may be hard to see at all. So without further ado, let's get straight into the 10 secrets you missed in the Minions The Rise of Gru movie part 2. Let's go guys! The Vicious Six are the main antagonists of Minions The Rise of Gru. They are the most notorious and best supervillain team in the country, and also the favorite supervillains of young Gru, as he's fascinated by their achievements and wants to become just like them when he grows up. The group was incredibly strong and grew up to be very powerful because of their leader, Wild Knuckles. Wild Knuckles formed the team, but the Vicious Six later turned their back on him because he was too old. So they started looking for a new member, and here's where young Gru comes in to be interviewed by them, and they laugh in his face for being too young. And here's where the movie starts. The group is made up of six members, each of them with a different power and ability. Now, is this important? Well, yes, because they are a reference to none other than the Sinister Six, a group of supervillains, each of them with different superpowers that united to defeat Spider-Man in the comics. The group had people that Spider-Man had encountered previously, like Sandman and the Green Goblin, and just like with the Vicious Six, they all had the same goal, defeat Spider-Man. And in the Minions, The Rise of Gru, the goal of the Vicious Six was the same, but here was to defeat young Gru and the Minions. The directors were heavily inspired by the Sinister Six of Spider-Man, and then they used it in the second movie. The Vicious Six, as we later see into the movie, are incredibly powerful because of their combined powers. Each one of the members has a great power that when combined with the other members, it creates the best supervillain team ever. But what makes the team very powerful is their most precious object, the Zodiac Stone. This stone has the power to transform people into animals of the Zodiac sign, a very funny power that creates a lot of funny scenes throughout the movie. But the Vicious Six hide a lot of secrets and curiosities that are very interesting to all of us. Bell Bottom, one of the key members of the Vicious Six has a very peculiar hairstyle and name. Well, she's a reference to the incredibly popular 60s singer called Donna Summer. Jean-Claude the French Crab is voiced by none other than the martial art legend Jean-Claude Van Damme. And at the same time, this character's appearance, style, and personality is heavily inspired and it references the character of the iconic movie The Clockwork Orange. And then we have Stronghold, who is voiced by Danny Trejo, the legendary actor that appeared in many blockbuster movies in the past. Each one of these characters hide a lot of secrets of their own. At the beginning of the movie, we see young Gru and the Minions having a ton of fun with each other. Young Gru enters a theater, and he sees that there is a lot of people inside. So to make them all leave, he throws a huge fart ball inside to watch the movie alone with the Minions. Then we see them go into an arcade place, where they all play all sorts of games like basketball hooping, and much more. A very fun montage that makes everyone that watches it laugh. But in one of the scenes of this montage, Gru and the Minions go to an ice cream shop, where they see that there is a big line of people waiting. And since waiting is something that Gru doesn't like at all, he takes a cheap 
cheese machine and starts spraying all the people in the line with it until he gets the ice cream without waiting. Well, this is a famous reference to the scene that we see in the first Despicable Me movie, where Gru enters a coffee shop and after seeing a lot of people waiting, he takes out his ice machine and starts freezing all the people in the line until he gets the coffee. The same situation is as in Minions The Rise of Gru, but with coffee instead of ice cream. A very funny reference to the origins of Gru. After the scene, the Minions and Young Gru go home where they see a bunch of funny things happen to all of them. As he walks into the house, Young Gru hears some sounds coming from the top, and he goes up the stairs to find out where the sounds are coming from. And then he opens the door, and he finds that his mom is doing some exercises with whom she says is her new guru. A very funny scene. And immediately after this, Gru goes to his room and goes to a secret lab where we see a ton of Minions working to build a new supervillain workplace for Young Gru. Here we see an amazing song montage where the Minions are working hard to make the best supervillain cave for a young Gru. And in one of the scenes of this montage, we see them dancing in line with each other. Well, this is a reference to the movie Snow White. Released in 1938, it's one of the most famous animated movies ever made. And in one of the scenes of this movie, we see the dwarves dancing in a line form when they get out of the mine. In the same manner we see the minions doing in the scene. This scene is incredibly well known and popular, so the directors wanted to give it a little funny reference in this minions movie. After the Minions listen to the speech that Young Gru gives in the lab that they're building for him, we see that Young Gru is going to sleep in his bed. Here he takes a flashlight and he points it at a poster of the Vicious Six that he has in his room. But then he points it down and he sees Bob hiding in his wardrobe and telling him that he can't sleep at night because he's scared. So Young Gru tells him that he can sleep in his bed with him. Then the other guys jump in in his bed as well and squeeze him in between. A very funny scene. Now in this scene, there are a lot of secrets that you didn't pick up on. First, if we look to the wall of the room, we see that the walls have a spider picture in them. Well, this spider is identical to the Spider-Man logo that Peter Parker has in his costume in the Spider-Man movies. Spider-Man 1 was released on June the 21st of 2022, and from the first movie until the last, Spider-Man has had the same exact spider in his costume. But specifically in this Spider-Man franchise, we see that Peter Parker has a big spider in his chest, even in the first suit that he makes in the beginning when he's about to fight in the cage. And if we compare the two spiders, the one in Spider-Man and the one in the Minions, we see that the reference here is way more than clear. Also taking into account that the directors of Minions The Rise of Gru said in an interview that they were big fans of Spider-Man, it's very obvious that this is a reference to Spider-Man. There's no doubt about this. In this same scene, we see a lot more secrets that maybe you overlooked. If we look at the right side of the scene, we see that Young Gru has a poster of a strong man holding up some heavy weights. Well, this is actually Stronghold, the strongest member of the Vicious Six. Stronghold is one of the main members of the Vicious Six who betrayed their boss, Wild Knuckles. He's also the character that chases Young Gru and the minions around the city when Gru steals the Zodiac sign along with the minions. He's the one who throws the van at Gru, and also he was the one who got into the tank to go to Gru's house, but he didn't find him there. He's a very funny and strong character that actually causes a lot more laughs in the movie. And because of this, Gru has it in his room right beside his bed because at the same time, he's also his favorite member of the Vicious Six. Another big secret that we see in the scene when Stuart jumps into the bed when the other minions and young Gru are with him. We see him wearing a red bathrobe. Well, this may seem completely unimportant, but it actually means a lot more than you think. This is a reference to the famous bathrobe that the publisher HH always wears. The HH bathrobe became a very notorious symbol of his work and personality and it became so famous that many people started copying his style during his era. And since the Minions The Rides of Gru was set in 1976, right when HH was more popular than ever and his red bathrobe was seen everywhere, they decided to give it a little funny reference in the scene. When young Gru wakes up in the morning after the previous scene in the bed, we see a very funny montage of Gru's morning routine. He's singing in the shower, dancing, and doing all sorts of funny stuff around the house when he gets up. Then, when he's about to leave the house to go for the interview of the Vicious Six, he's met by the three minions at his door who tell him that they're going with him to the interview. And then, fast forward to the next scene, Gru goes to the music store in the city to know more about the Vicious Six for the interview. Now, when young Gru is talking to Nefario peeking over the counter, if we look at the back, we see some interesting things. The vinyl at the top right of the shelf is a reference to the famous rock singer Elvis Presley. Born in January the 8th of 1935, Elvis is one of the most famous and liked rock star singers of all time. And if we look at the bottom left of the shelf, we see an album that is a reference to Let It Be of the Beatles. The album style and cover are identical. Let It Be was released in 1970 by the Beatles and it's one of the most famous albums of the group, mainly because it was the last album of the iconic group. Then, Nefario shows him another song and this is the song You Are no Good by Linda Ransard, a very iconic song that the directors wanted to reference in the movie. 
And well, my guys, that's all the dose of DJ there is for today. I really hope you guys liked this video and liked the part two of the secrets you missed in the Minions, the Rise of Gru. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one, my guys. Peace!